Uh, in my presentation today, I will address the specific, um, the two generous, I would say, crimes allegedly perpetrated during the Ukraine, Russia, Ukraine armed conflict, especially in the Russia, in Russia occupied Crimea. But also, I will point out the deficiencies of Ukraine's domestic policy with respect to cultural property protection and also, by extension, um, as regards the domestic investigation and prosecution of cultural property crimes. Um, generally, um, from the point of view of the general public, but sometimes we can also notice that, or largely we notice uh, that also from the perspective of the courts, um, crimes against persons um, get primary attention. However, the situation uh, has been really changing uh, in the recent years, um, starting with the uh, Bambian Buddhas uh, blown up by the Taliban, uh, then with the first um, conviction uh, by the ICC, um, recognizing the individual criminal responsibility of Mr. Al-Magdi uh, in the Mali case, um, as regards the intentional destruction of cultural property. And generally, even recently, uh, the uh, comments of President Trump as regards the possible targeting of Iranian cultural property also um, raise a uh, huge public dismay. Um, I think all these uh, issues and the issue, uh, the, the example of uh, the Russia-Ukraine armed conflict exemplify that generally the groups in print in history and on a particular territory can be um, modified um, and uh, sometimes exterminated, not only by the physical extermination of, of uh, a person or a group of people, but uh, through the attacks on their cultural heritage. And uh, uh, Bruno uh, mentioned uh, Raphael Lemkin, the person who coined the term genocide, and um, it should be worth mentioning that Raphael Lemkin also spoke about the cultural genocide, so he understood the extermination or the modification of the role of a group uh, can, can be done through the attack on um, its cultural property. As regards the situation uh, in Ukraine, um, uh, uh, Russia annexed uh, uh, Ukraine's uh, Crimean Peninsula in uh, uh, early 2014. Uh, the prosecutor of the International Criminal Court um, has found that the situation in Crimea amounts to the situation of occupation, which means that under international law, under the Geneva Conventions, uh, the law of um, international armed conflict applies there. Uh, parallel to these developments, um, uh, the separatist movements uh, allegedly uh, supported by Russia uh, started in eastern Ukraine. And as of now, uh, the prosecutor of the International Criminal Court, who's conducting a preliminary examination of the situation in Ukraine, um, has said that um, the situation in uh, Donbass, the eastern provinces of Ukraine, uh, clearly amounts to a non-international armed conflict. And she's currently examining the possible extent of the international uh, component there as well. Um, both the ICC prosecutor, but also a number of non-international and international uh, human rights organizations, namely Human Rights Watch, Amnesty International, the UN Human Rights Monitoring Mission in Ukraine, monitor the situations uh, both in Crimea and in Donbass, um, uh, singling out a whole spectrum of violations there. Namely for Crimea, uh, there would be uh, the persecution on political and religious grounds uh, that applies to ethnic Ukrainians and Crimean Tatars, Ukraine's indigenous uh, Muslim population in the peninsula, enforced disappearances, unlawful detentions, sham trials. Um, recently, the ICC prosecutor has also singled out the cultural property crimes allegedly perpetrated uh, in the peninsula but they um, concerned more the uh, excessive appropriation of property not justified um, by the situation of, 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 of the armed conflict. As regards Eastern Ukraine, um, the other alleged crimes are being perpetrated uh, uh, there, uh, namely torture, uh, inhuman treatment, uh, the range of sexual and gender-based violence crimes. Um, and as regards the cultural property-related issues, um, uh, uh, the crime of uh, 
intentional targeting of cultural sites has been singled out. And also the use of um, cultural uh, venues for the purposes of torture and forced labor. Um, why the situation um, with Ukraine's cultural property in the armed conflict is not a uh, particularly clear cut? Well, the violations are um, quite uh, special. Apart from the so-called ordinary removal of uh, cultural property from the occupied Crimea, for instance, uh, the example would be uh, the Ivazovsky exhibition in Moscow, uh, for which uh, more than 30 um, artworks uh, were taken from um, a Crimean museum of Ivazovsky. Uh, we have also other uh, particular crimes. For instance, um, Ukraine's uh, world heritage site, uh, the Kersonassos, situated there. Uh, um, Russia tried to turn it uh, into the bastion of Christianity and to entrust a priest to um, manage that cultural site. Uh, this is the extension of uh, Russia's policy to or assert it as the bastion of uh, orthodox, in, uh, orthodox Christianity in Eastern Europe. Also, uh, um, the construction of uh, the so-called Crimean, the Kerch Bridge, um, uh, raised the sui generis um, uh, amalgam of crimes, because uh, for the construction of that bridge, allegedly, um, quite a few um, uh, uh, pieces of underwater cultural heritage um, have been um, uh, have been taken from from uh, the um, sea of uh, uh, Azov and uh, and the Black Sea, uh, also uh, to uh, uh, enable the construction of the bridge. Uh, many Muslim burial places um, have been destroyed uh, to connect the bridge with the peninsula. Apart from that, also. Uh, a huge number of archaeological excavations unsanctioned by Ukraine uh, allegedly taken place uh, in uh, occupied Crimea. And apart from that, a very special uh, cultural property crime um, is uh, perpetrated with respect to the Bakhchisarai Palace, which is the only architectural piece, remaining architectural piece of the Crimean Tatars. And as I mentioned, this is an indigenous uh, people uh, or, um, who live in Crimea and who suffered gravely from the Stalin order deportation in 1944. So the current occupying authorities argue that this palace needs um, um, uh, 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 restoration works and um, allegedly they are uh, conducting this work in a manner that really erases the cultural and historical value of that object, replacing the completely new material, and generally um, uh, making these works uh, which are not necessary, according to the former uh, management of uh, the palace. Um, I should also notice that uh, this palace is on the World Heritage Tentative list, and uh, the Ukrainian authorities have not been consulted with with respect to whether such works are needed and what type of works should be conducted. Um, as regards the law applicable to this situation, as I already mentioned, the situation in Crimea amounts to uh, the situation of occupation and therefore the law of international armed conflict applies. So um, the regulations annexed to the 1907 Hague Convention, Fourth Hague Convention, Convention respecting the laws and customs of war on land um, are binding uh, both upon Russia and Ukraine. Uh, this convention provides that public, religious, art and academic institutions um, actually equal to private property and any damage to such institutions is forbidden and must be prosecuted. Um, second, both Russia and Ukraine are parties to the 1954 um, Convention for the Protection of Cultural Property in the Event of Armed Conflict and to its first uh, uh, protocol. And it's very important that the convention um, prescribes that the occupying authorities have to consult the um, national authorities of the occupied territory uh, as to uh, in what way cultural property has to be uh, preserved. They may take emergency measures, unilateral emergency measures, but these are the measures in the situation of emergency. And at least going by the media reports and by the reports of the human rights NGOs that we receive about 
the alleged crimes that um, I listed in Crimea, um, no such situation of emergency has arisen. And even uh, if, it, uh, if, if it is the situation, uh, so with the Bakhtisarai Palace, still no consultation um, has been initiated by the occupying authorities with uh, Ukraine. Um, uh, also, uh, the 1972 UNESCO World Heritage Convention, again, both upon both states, provides for the um, respect for cultural property and also prohibits the illicit export uh, of, of cultural property and uh, uh, obliges for the return um, uh, of it. Uh, and also customary international law provides for uh, the respect for cultural property in uh, armed conflict and the obligation of the occupying power to return any unlawfully exported cultural property. Same obligations are contained in the UNESCO military manual on the protection of cultural property. And um, as of now, uh, it seems that the law uh, is pretty, um, straightforward with respect to uh, Russia's obligation not to take unilateral actions um, towards Ukraine's cultural property in occupied territory. Um, there are more specific obligations, for instance, the ones concerning um, uh, the enhanced protection or the prohibited um, modification of cultural property in occupied territories which is contained in the second protocol to the 1954 um, Hague Convention that I mentioned. And uh, although Ukraine um, acceded to this protocol only yesterday, um, it still does not provide an excuse uh, for uh, to, to, to conduct the destructive renovation of the Bakhtisarai Palace because Russia is not party to this second protocol. And um, actually the obligation not to allow such a distortive modification uh, is contained in the mentioned UNESCO manual on the protection of cultural property. So uh, the excuse that Ukraine was not party to the protocol or that Russia is not party to it still uh, is not really a standing um, excuse. Um, I will briefly uh, say also um, why um, Ukraine's policy still remains flawed with respect to such apparent violations, no matter how apparent they are. First, Ukraine's criminal code is quite uh, cursory as regards the war crimes incorporated in it. Uh, basically, it contains only one article, 438, uh, that lists uh, not far <laughs> not all uh, war crimes and also not uh, crimes against humanity are inexistent in Ukraine's criminal code. Um, as regards the cultural property crimes, uh, only the pillage of cultural property is indicated in the code. So the currently uh, Ukraine's domestic investigators and prosecutors who deal with the um, cultural property crimes uh, in Crimea and in Donbass, uh, they use kind of the peaceful articles uh, from, from, from the other bits of the code. And uh, it's a bit ironic that um, it's the, the sixth year of the armed conflict with Russia and the code remains uh, unupdated and still so cursory with respect to the, the, the specific list of war crimes and the more detailed of, uh, list of war crimes um, and uh, violations of IHL, international humanitarian law, concerning cultural property. Um, even more ironic, the second protocol to the Hague Convention uh, that, as I mentioned, Ukraine acceded to just yesterday, contains an obligation of uh, parties to properly uh, criminalize in their domestic legislation the violations against um, cultural property. So uh, it really remains a lot to be done on a domestic level, uh, both in terms of, of, of the implementation of international law into the domestic legislation, but also in terms of professional development of the investigators, prosecutors and judges to deal with these crimes. Apart from this homework that needs to be done, I would just also point out that um, these very specific um, violations in Crimea, they, uh, uh, they, they're not confined to this particular armed conflict. Uh, they uh, generally indicate the policy of Russia to uh, appropriate the history of that particular peninsula and to say that the imprint of, of, of Ukrainians and Crimean Tatars is there not 
uh, not that strong. So um, I think th these crimes really speak that assaults against cultural heritage constitute a very creeping encroachment on the people's ident identity and endanger its very survival. And therefore, they should get more and more attention, both at international level and at domestic level. Thank you very much.